what is up YouTube? Uh, the topic for today's video would be selecting the right database uh, inside of Google Cloud for your uh, work streams. So basically, as most of you would have heard about GCP, Google Cloud Platform is the suite of cloud computing services which Google provides, uh, which is kind of based on the same infrastructure which Google has built over the years of experience with their internal apps like the Google Search, YouTube, uh, Maps, etc. And uh, in terms of the Google Cloud, the Google Cloud provides an extensive list of uh, services starting like from the bare metal VMs and uh, eventually going up to like machine learning services and, uh, and a lot more. All right, talking a bit more on Google Cloud. So Google Cloud is has uh, a lot of these services, what they call it. Uh, in terms of services, they, they provide uh, different layers to it. So they, you can use them to like run up an instance, then use it like uh, to store data and also like a lot of like these services are uh, like calling like apis etc so in this video we, we are mainly going to focus on the base layer of the service which is mainly used to store the data so in google cloud uh, there are many ways uh, in which you can use to store the data but it, it actually depends on the use case wise uh, where it would be like more effective for your specific use case and um, and that's what we're gonna try to discuss in this video. So uh, let's look at the uh, actual services which are in place in terms of Google Cloud. Uh, let me quickly share my screen. As you can see, in terms of services, I've kind of laid out uh, the different types which are available. So you can always go and uh, start your own open source database. Basically just hop onto Google Cloud, create your own virtual machine of the desired configuration and then like use Docker or, or like any installation script, uh, use that to uh, set up a, uh, a database inside, can be Postgres or anything, any any technology of your choice. In some cases, this, this is kind of useful because uh, uh, if there's a specific database which you are not, uh, you don't have it as a Google service, then you definitely go ahead and uh, build up your own. Uh, but this is like the base level. Uh, but uh, what Google Cloud provides is like, different kind of services uh, in terms of the fully managed database and that's what they call it. So I kind of laid out the different list uh, uh, of database which are available at your disposal uh, on Google Cloud. So it starts from like five, five base storage, cloud storage to like which ends up like to a uh, BigQuery which is like a warehousing solution. A few of these services is not only for just storing the data but they are, they are kind of a lot more to it. For example, like Firebase uh, is not only the storage, but it kind of allows uh, you to connect to a mobile as like using a mobile SDK very quickly, very easily. So like sp similarly, Cloud Spanner is like similar, but it's like a Cloud SQL, but uh, horizontally scalable. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about one by one on what to what kind of database technologies exist uh, and what the different options are. And uh, like after that, we're going to compare which kind of works for your use case. Just before moving forward, I, I wanted to share a few things. Uh, uh, right now, like nowadays, like as engineers, you you tend not to build things from scratch. The idea is that you have to be lean and agile. You have to kind of achieve things quickly. And with the cloud services coming in place where they kind of provide you multiple options at a click of a button or like pressing enter, I would say um, uh, it becomes very important uh, as a skill to learn where to use the right service. It would be important for a data engineer slash software engineer to, to learn which goes where, specifically for a data engineer, uh, technologies like BigQuery, Bigtable, and even uh, cloud storage is quite important. Uh, for a person like uh, a mobile developer, Firebase is a bit more important in that case. So knowing what goes, like what plugs where is like one, quite important nowadays in terms of uh, using the cloud services. So that, that is what we're gonna discuss in this video of going further. So moving on to the actual services, let's start with the first thing, which is uh, Cloud SQL. So basically Cloud SQL is like a, uh, is like a managed database from a Google's uh, perspective. Uh, it's just like a MySQL or a Postgres SQL running on a, a VM, but basically everything is uh, managed by, the ops is kind of managed by Google itself. So if you click of a button, you can like, turn it on and off or just use uh, Google CLI to turn on or off. So uh, like it kind of ensures the data is available all the time and it has the capacity and point out uh, if there's an issue. 
very easy to get started with uh basically works very as same as like uh postgres sql is just that uh they just run up the instance and uh, they kind of work the ops are kind of working itself you, you don't have to work for it and then uh, it kind of also manages the um, backups as well uh one thing quick to note is uh, on based on my experience uh, cloud sql in terms of limitation would be if you have some data around like a uh, few hundreds of gigabytes it it is kind of okay to use cloud sql but it, if it gets more more than that then uh, you kind of have to look for other options and speaking of options uh, let's move to cloud spanner basically uh, that's where cloud spanner is uh, kind of overcoming the problems faced with cloud sql it's uh, the cloud sql planner as a service is basically cloud sql uh, which is working across uh, uh, horizontal scaling that's the idea so basically if you have a data like which is a bit more than a few hundred gigabytes or is it like in terabytes it's uh, it would be right to use uh, the cloud spanner as a service because then there's like the restrictions are less and then uh, there's a lot of automatic sharding which is happening uh, at the back end and the data is kind of duplicated across uh, helping you to scale uh, very easily moving forward uh, let's look at a couple of uh, analytical processing databases uh, olaps so uh, bigquery is one of the options uh, it is one of the options which is quite preferred by my workload being a data engineer i i kind of require to dump a lot of data into structured format uh, even like the unstructured data can be very in easily being uh, put up in in a bigquery instance so the best part uh, of this is like this is kind of uh, uh, easy to use in terms of like you just need to use sql uh, very similar to cloud sql to access uh, and select statements select data but the best part is uh, at the back end it, it kind of separates the storage and compute the way it executes uh, the queries is is way much faster than cloud sql so it's like super scalable till the petabytes of uh, level of data so it's basically a columnar based data for faster read and response rate okay moving on uh, cloud big table uh, is also like an OLAP, but uh, it is a bit different from BigQuery. This is like specifically uh, NoSQL databases, which is uh, mainly important to use where your throughput is very high, when you want like very low latency in terms of like uh, uh, handling a lot of requests every second, then uh, this, this database is very important to use. And in terms of scalability, this can be scaled across to very big clusters, still providing high availability of like 99%, much more than 99% and uh, very low downtime. Moving forward, let's look at Cloud Firestore, Firebase. These are basically no SQL data storages where you can store data. Uh, it's more of a key value, uh, key uh, value object store where you like you kind of define a key and then uh, it stores like JSON, in, in JSON in, inside of it. Very similar to uh, DynamoDB in AWS, the way I feel it. Uh, but that's more of it. If you want to store uh, like no SQL data, which has a lot of uh, unstructured data, uh, like like yeah, a lot of columns which are um, denormalized, then this is the way to go. And then if you have mobile application, then the Firebase real time is uh, very useful in that case because it's, it already has developing kits in place. Last but not the least is a uh, cloud memory store. Uh, basically, this is a service which uh, which is very useful in terms of uh, when you want to cache. When you want a, a, a big cache, uh, then uh, cloud memory store is like a managed service which uses Redis or memcache behind the scenes automatically to support like large clusters of data and uh, provides like sub millisecond of latency in terms of delivering the data. So the idea of uh, a cache is basically the data is kind of stored in the RAM itself, uh, thus providing like a high throughput. So just one more thing I, I forgot to add on uh, to the beginning of that list was cloud storage. Uh, this is like the most important part of a Google database for storage. That's the underlying uh, um, infrastructure which uh, Google st storage uses. So basically it's like a file system which is like a highly available file system that can be st that can stores like store files and objects and it's like more of like a file system where you can just copy data, paste the data there, less of like querying. But then the idea is you can store this unstructured data uh, uh, at like, like a big scale which is like petabytes plus. So uh, there's no limitation in terms of like how much amount you can store. And specifically, it's quite cheap to use because it's just storing files on, on, on the service. So uh, pretty interesting to use when uh, uh, you have like huge petabytes of data that can be very relatable to a, f a few use cases like telecom, etc. 
so you can just go there and use it one more thing and it also like uh, uh the best use case of cloud storage is storing uh, a lot of images or text or videos uh it makes sense to use this service because uh, the instruction data is kind of just stored there as an object so pretty interesting and uh, all of these services are very easy to uh, start on with and use uh, uh, in your respective use cases all right so moving on to the part where uh, we look at uh, these services at a high level so i kind of prepared uh, this table which looks at uh, different services in terms of uh, different attributes on the left so you can see like capacity access metaphor read write so it kind of compares it's it's very easy to compare uh, all these databases across these points um so uh within this you, it kind of helps you this map can easily help you to decide which uh which database to use for your use case so you can look at like cloud storage which is like a petabytes uh plus uh, capacity compared to uh, uh google cloud sql which is like uh, a few hundreds of gig gigabytes but if in case you want to move away from like, uh, like uh, away from like the problems of the cloud sql you can go to cloud spanner which has like terabytes of scale so a uh, very easy to compare in terms of your use cases and then you can also see um uh like uh, a few attributes like on how you can read or write so you can see like uh, in terms of uh, read or write you can in, in for reading you, uh, the cloud storage is uh, mostly copying like a disk it's just like a file system but cloud sql uh, uh cloud sql bigquery is more of a sql syntax that's why i've added like a sql syntax like select and then fireso is like filtering objects because it's like a new sql database is it's similar to sql but yeah the, the way of uh, using it is just filtering objects on properties which are the attributes and then uh, there are a few more attributes to it uh, the update granularity where you can see like uh, the problem with cloud storage is if you want to update the data you can only do by file by file level uh, uh, that's why when people use this database they use it in a structured format of like you using like years year month date so the data is kind of uh, uh, stored in batches so it's easy to uh, pull out and update in that case but uh, moving on uh, to other databases to compare you can see the the sql types of databases it's e easy to update on a field level which is and for file so it's an attribute similar to like a field but specifically for a big query a big table which is being done at a row level so you, you need to be cautious on that and um, i think that's most of it i'm going to share this uh, ex uh, this uh, sheet uh, across in the link so feel free to check this one out all right moving on to the last part of the video so uh, in this one i'm i kind of prepared uh, a, a flow chart which is kind of inspired uh, from a, a few videos i've seen before on google cloud but yeah this is kind of what i prepared uh, in terms of decision making which might be able to help you um in terms of uh, the technology to decide uh, and place plug and play where your use case is so the way i i see this is like uh, you start from uh, the structure and see like if your data is structured then uh, then then the next question kind of arrives uh, for me as a data engineering uh, if like you want to do analytics or you don't like you want to use like an oltp instead of uh, a olap so if it's like an olap then uh, then the next question arrives uh, if you want like very high throughput like for most of the use cases bigquery works so this is this kind of results to bigquery but if you want like really high throughput and very low latency uh then big big table is in place uh there's there are a few shortcomings of the big table where you need to decide uh the right index to filter out your data at a very high speed but apart from that the then big table will be able to manage your load uh kind of an edge based uh technology very similar to that but and coming back to bigquery if you want to do analytics like at a petabyte scale of data you and you would want like some structure which is in place then use this uh big query to analyze your big sets of data it's very easy to import and then kind of use just sql to analyze the data and uh there are a lot of add-ons where you can just connect uh, a dash dashboard directly or build ml models on top of it or just use simple queries to analyze the data uh works perfectly in that case but uh then if you don't want to use it for analytics and then it's like an you know, oltp for processing you would want then uh, you want to check for the another parameter if the data you want to store is relational uh 
so then this question is like the universal question comes in like SQL or no SQL. Uh, a lot of the use cases are managed by SQL and I kind of prefer SQL. Then you wanna, uh, then you kind of arrive to uh, one more question in terms of deciding either of the two. The two options are Cloud Spanner or Cloud SQL as I mentioned before in my video. Uh, if the data is like a few hundred gigabytes, Cloud SQL works easily and smoothly. But then, then if you want a, uh, and a high scalability and high data, like uh, the database uh, volume into, in terms of TV, then uh, Cloud Spanner is the way to go. And then uh, the next thing is NoSQL. Uh, the a few of the options in terms of NoSQL is uh, if you want like to connect to a mobile, then the Firebase Real Time DB works perfectly. Uh, it has an SDK, easy to integrate. Uh, I I use it way back, but yeah, I, I from my understanding, it's like quite easy to, for you to integrate into mobile apps. And then the next uh, stage comes if you know no mobile SDK, then uh, two options arrives, which is like you want to use it for cache because uh, most of the use cases kind of arrives in that that you have a key and and all the values are stored. That's where the memory store comes in, which is basically just Redis on wheels, I would say, and um, fully managed Redis service or memcache to store your cache. Uh, the other option is Firestore, uh, uh, very similar to Firebase, but uh, specifically to uh, any any application or any type of storage if you want to achieve. So that's where the Firestore places itself. And uh, in terms of uh, uh, the other part, which I did not cover yet, uh, if what if your, your data is not structured yet and it's like super huge, then uh, the best use case is cloud storage. So basically this can be the place, uh, a very cheap place to dump all your data, all your images, videos, uh, any unstructured data can easily go here. Uh, that's where it makes perfect sense to cloud use cloud storage. The other counterpart is like uh, Firebase storage. If the data is like, uh, you wanna store the data and you would wanna use a mobile app uh, SDK. So if you have a mobile app, which uses it, or, or even a web, web app works perfectly. Yeah, essentially uh, the underlying technology must be the same. It's just that the Firebase storage provides um, uh, easy connectivity to mobile SDKs. Yep, I think uh, that covers most of it in terms of uh, what to decide. I'm gonna share this whimsical uh, flowchart uh, as uh, as well as the table in, in my YouTube description. So feel free to check it out. That kind of covers uh, most of the video in terms of choosing the, uh, the right technology uh, slash service for you or use case in Google Cloud. Uh, a few things to add on. Uh, if you kind of found uh, this video to be helpful and it added value to your use case, then uh, please hit the subscribe button and the like button. Uh, it kind of helps me recommend this video to other like very similar people like you. And thanks a lot for watching this video.